everybody. Um, welcome to a sunny Manchester. Um, can't tell, obviously. Um, so uh, this is what we're going to cover today. Um, uh, a very brief introduction to the to the UK data service generally. Um, uh, the main bulk of the um, presentation will be about the international macro data. Uh, we'll give you some examples of the of the data. Tell you about each of the different types of uh, data provider. Um, tell you about the documentation. Give you some tips on using the data. And then we'll have um, a live um, follow along demo um, for um, accessing the data at the end. And then um, right at the end, um, if you've got any questions, you can ask questions as we're going through, um, type them into the, uh, the um, Q&A box, uh, but we'll, we'll answer those at the end. Okay, uh, I'm gonna turn my um, video off uh, and we'll just share the screen, okay? There we go. Okay. So, um, what is the UK Data Service? Um, we are funded by the Economic and Social Research Council to provide um, access to uh, important um, secondary social science data, the sort of data that hopefully you want to, uh, to use in your research. Uh, and we provide all the support, training and guidance to use that data. Um, we have a huge range of data. Um, I'm not going to go into all this, um, but um, it, it's more than just the international um, macroeconomic data. Um, we also host data sets produced by researchers. So if you are funded by the SRC, um, you are obliged to offer any of the data that you produce to ourselves and then we will catalog that and um, hold that for uh, others to access. Um, go. So this is our, our front of uh, the uh, website. The important one here, actually, I'm just gonna share, I'm, I'm gonna go to this live. Good to be daring. If we go to the UK data service. Um, training, training events, obviously you'll have been there because that's how we found out about uh, this particular uh, webinar. Um, our learning hub, lots and lots of really good information about how to use our data. Um, and help really useful because actually really uh, useful FAQs there but also there right at the bottom we've got the help desk contacts if you want to get in touch with us and ask us questions you can um, and there's uh, details on there on how, how to um, get in touch with us uh, it'll, it goes to a general help desk and then it gets rerouted to the um, the subject experts So the international macro data <clears throat> is uh, it's data about countries and aspects of those countries. So um, it's it's there's also uh, I would say that there's also a, a small amount of sub country data as well, uh, region level usually or metropolitan area. Um, the data banks typically contain time series data uh, produced by international governmental organisations. Um, all the data are available free uh, for, at the point of use for staff and students at UK universities, also the House of Commons Library, House of Lords Library, uh, and almost all of it is, uh, so almost all of it is open, so everyone can use it. You don't have to be at a UK um, university. Um, there are some um, data sets that are only available to uh, members of staff and students at UK uh, universities and colleges, um, we'll, we'll go through which ones those are. But even those ones are uh, simple to access. You don't need to um, do any difficult registration for that. Um, and uh, they're still free. So our, our data providers are very large um, 
NGOs, international organizations, um, and they are the gold standard of, of uh, data providers. Um, they have a presence in every country in the world uh, and the power to create international standards, um, create statistical infrastructures and provide the technical assistance for, for those um, data sets as well. Um, we have licensing agreements with all these organizations so that the data they produce um, are free to the UK academic community. So a um, huge range of, of, of things that, that our data covers. I'm, I'm not, not going to list those out, but you can see it covers just about everything. Um, and this is this is what it looks like in our in our um, data system. Um, it is um, data at um, a, a geographical level. In this in this case, it's, it's metropolitan areas displayed as as rows, uh, and the years as displayed as as columns. And then we have a single subject, so it's total population of the metropolitan area. Um, it, it's possible to display um, more than one subject, many more than one subject, um, and there's also the, the uh, ability to um, rearrange the dimensions as well, to, to, so it looks suitable for, for you. So um, World Bank, IMF, OECD and UNESCO data are open to everybody. Um, the United Nations industrial databases and the uh, International Energy Agency data are restricted to UK FEN HE staff and students. Um, access is via federated access. You probably don't know what that means. It doesn't really matter. It just means that you use your own login for your local um, university or college. Um, and the, the data is delivered via over the web via a, a package called ukds.stat. Um, .stat is, a, is a, a, an application developed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in association with um, lots of um, other um, international uh, and national uh, statistical users. So people like the National Bank of Belgium, um, the Australian Statistical Authority, um, um, Stats Canada, and ourselves. So we all cooperate on what we would like um, the interface to, to do or to look like, and the OECD go away and, and, and make that for us. Um, download formats, um, all the popular ones, really. Uh, <clears throat> When we do our um, little um, demo, I'm going to start at the catalogue records, um, and so you can you can you can see how to access the data from 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 a search, basically. Um, so we have catalogue records for all our data, and not just the uh, international macroeconomic data, the all the data that um, UK D, uh, UK Data Service holds, and all of the catalogue records will have an access data button up in the top right. Uh, so you can use that to go straight to the um, to the whatever package that the data is um, it, it, it is using. Um, there are also all sorts of metadata in there about about the um, the data. So um, there's very often a, a data set user guide uh, in there and uh, details on how to cite the study. Uh, it will also tell you um, the access uh, arrangements for that data set. And that's a link, so you can, you, can, you can click on that and find exactly what it means by open. There we go, there's the access data. Okay, and this is what it looks like when you first go to ukds.stat. Uh, and that's the web address in, in the bottom there. Um, <clears throat> Data providers on the left, and you can expand those links to, to show all the data sets from, from those uh, data providers. There is a login at the top here, um, but for those um, data sets that require a login, it will also prompt you. And this is what it looks like when it's populated with some data. 
So again, on the left, we have the um, data providers and data sets. On the right, we have um, the metadata panel. And in the middle, we've got the, uh, the data display. And we'll get we'll go through that, and we'll we'll, we'll show you how to to uh, to use that uh, in our demo at the end. So the World Bank um, collects data on all aspects of human development. Um, it's annual data. Uh, it's designed to be comparable between countries. Uh, it's all open access, um, and we have the World Development Indicators, International Debt Statistics. The African development indicators is now deprecated data sets, and that's been all the um, the indicators in there are now within the world development indicators data set. Um, but we keep that on for um, historical reasons, and the subnational population database as well. Um, so they cover. The, the World Development Indicators is possibly one of our most popular data sets, highly cited, uh, provides a broad picture of poverty trends, development indicators, uh, use of environmental resources, uh, performance of the public sector, um, labor market, um, infrastructure, health, education, and gender. Um, huge range of indicators for every country um, so it's well worth having a look at the um the the guide that uh, that's within the um the metadata so this is an example of the data um this is the percentage of population using uh, the internet from 2011 to 2019 um this is this data taken from the 2020 uh, version of the data set we've actually got 2021 um in data in there now So a uh, little um, little quiz now uh, to get your brains thinking. Uh, so this is uh, using data from the World Development Indicators. Uh, which country had the largest proportion of women in Parliament during 2019? So if you go to www.menti.com, I put in the code two one three two seven four four five, you'll get a little um, a little uh, poll to um, to fill in. And hopefully we'll get some some answers. Okay. So that is Bolivia. Bolivia had the highest proportion of, of women in parliament during 2019. And that data uh, is taken from the proportion of seats held by women in national parliaments um, subject from the World Development Indicators. Oh, sorry, Rwanda had the high, like, highest uh, proportion of seats. So 61% of seats were held by women uh, in the uh, National Parliament uh, of Rwanda in 2019. Um, international Debt Statistics um, is a global database on debt and aid. Uh, it focuses on um, the flow of money trends in external debt uh, and interest payments. And there are over 200 different time series indicators from 1970 up to 2013 uh, for most reporting countries. And pipeline data for scheduled debt service repayments on existing commitments up to 2022. The subnational population database um, is time series uh, population estimates for 75 countries at the first administrative level for each country, so provinces, states, um, regions. Uh, data is available from 2000 up to 2016 and includes the total population numbers for each country and the shares relative to total national population estimates. Um, it allows researchers, students, and practitioners to investigate population and intra-country migration trends uh, by comparing population changes over time for 1,350 subnational regions um, and allows you to study the size and structure of a country's population. Oop, um, this is what it looks like. So this is Belarus subnational data um for uh different regions within uh, belarus 
For the IMF data banks, uh, International Monetary Fund, um, the primary purpose of the fund is to maintain international financial stability. And the data it collects reflects that theme. Um, the fund collects detailed macroeconomic data um, from all its member countries. And it's watching out for financial crises and balance of payments difficulties. So uh, these are the five major data banks produced by the IMF. Uh, collectively, they provide a global picture of economic development and international trade over the last 50 years. And all of these data um, sets are open access, so anyone can access this data. So the, the IFS um, is um, the principal um, uh, statistical publication of the uh, IMF, and it's the standard source for all aspects of international and domestic finance. Uh, it's produced every month since 1948, its data is monthly, quarterly, and annual data for um, over 200 countries. It's uh, it's a reference publication. So um, the exchange rates uh, used in the IFS are used as the basis for conversion for all the United Nations data banks and World Bank series. Uh, it has got three sections, um, country tables, where the data is fairly raw and unprocessed, it's not designed for making comparisons uh, between countries. It's, it's more for um, benchmarking countries uh, for their own progress over time. Uh, they pull the, the more comparable series into the world tables, uh, which also has commodity prices uh, for oil, coffee, gold, and wheat. This is uh, an example of the, the, the sort of data within that. These are... Um, the world's total reserves of gold uh, in US dollars at market price. And you can, so basically you can see the value of gold over time from 1950 up to 2020 uh, with a uh, uh, quite a deep dip there after the, um, the financial crisis of um, 2009. Uh, direction of trade um, is, uh, it's data on the value of exports between countries and their trading partners. For each country, it lists every country it trades with and the volume of trade over time. So that's 250 countries and 12 regional groups. It's monthly, quarterly and annual data. Um, most countries' data extends from the 1980s to the present. Um, and it's great research potential for economics. It's authoritative, it's long, it's got a consistent time series data. Um, it's a um, good subject country and temporal uh, change coverage. And the data is harmonized and comparable between countries. It is a huge data set. Um, and it looks like this. So um, month and years across the top, uh, the data starts in January 1980, runs up to, um, well, it's, it, it runs up to uh, a few years behind, um, behind present day. So what we have here, we've got the reporter country is Canada. Um, we have all its trading partner countries and it's the value of exports um, per month uh, from September 2015 up to June 2016. Um, so there are 250 countries and all the groups that it trades with, all the countries and groups reporting exports and imports. So there are around 125,000 time series, around 3.75 million annual data values and 52 million monthly data values. So it's an enormous data set, um, one which is um, very good to see in uh, UKDS.stats because we can split it down to its constituent parts. 
the, the balance of payment statistics uh, is a time series data set covering the, the standard balance of payments components and international investment positions of countries. Um, most countries' data extends back to the 1970s to the present date, and that's quarterly and annual. And the government financial statistics um, tells you how, uh, how it gets its money and how it spends it. Um, covers data, uh, government income, such as tax aid, debt, expenditure by sector, so defence, education, health, etc., for all levels of government, so national, state and local government. Uh, there are 174 countries. Um, it's, it's annual data, uh, runs back to um, 1990 uh, to present date. Um, and the World Economic Outlook um, is um, a report presented by the IMF staff um, it's um, analysis and projections of uh, economic developments at the global level. Um, the WEO contains the data that underpins um, the annual IMF um, World Economic Outlook report. Um, so it's data on national accounts, inflation, unemployment rates, balance of payments, uh, fiscal indicators, and commodity prices. And it, it's a forecast. So it looks forward. So um, I think it's uh, we're currently forecasting up to twenty twenty six, maybe twenty twenty seven now actually. Um, so an example here. So there was a um, after uh, Brexit, there was a a revision of the um, GDP growth forecast for twenty seventeen, and that's reflected in the uh, World Economic Outlook of, of um, April 2016. So um, it cut the growth forecast across the world um, with the UK taking the hardest hit. Um, OECD um, data, um, it's rather huge. Um, I'll, I'll, the, next, um, the next screen shows you that. So the OECD um, is a partner organisation and it, it tends to be um, first world countries, um, so um, G20 countries, and a few other uh, fast growing economies. Um, the data is completely open, um, but for the most part, it only covers those countries within the OECD. So that's, that's what the OECD data covers it's 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 enormous set of data sets absolutely enormous um, and i'm not going to list those so uh, an example of that um uh, greenhouse gas emissions for the uk um in tons of co2 um and so we'll go back to the quiz uh, if you go to www.menti.com, use code 6655 um, which country out of the OECD countries do you think had the highest long-term unemployment rate in 2016? So this uses the, the Better Life Index from 2016 uh, for, um, from the OECD. Um, and it's the Social and Welfare Statistics um, group of data okay so oh, greece had the longest term unemployment rate in 2016 following the um financial crisis um and the the subsequent um imposition of of quite strict financial regulation by um the eu uh, unesco data um Education statistics from 1970 onwards, um, innovation statistics, so that's um, research and development activity data from 2005 onwards, culture um, from 2009 or 1995 for feature film statistics, and communications and information um, from 95 onwards, all open data. Um, and an example of this, um, youth literacy rate, um, 
for 15 to 24 year olds for both sexes. Um, this comes from the UNESCO, UNESCO Education Statistics. Um, very useful because although we have similar um, data from OECD, that's on, only covers the OECD countries, whereas this con covers um, all countries within the UN. So also from the UN um, is the um, Industrial Development Organization, part of the, um, the, the UN family. Um, these are statistics on um, industrial and uh, manufacturing um, um, industrial and manufacturing sectors. Um, there's Instat two and Instat four, which is Instat two is less detailed, uh, but has data all the way back to nineteen sixty three. Instat 4 is uh, much more detailed, uh, but only data from 1990 onwards. This data is restricted, but it is free, uh, freely accessible to um, users from UK, FE and HE. Um, example of that, um, so this is um, output um, from uh, UK manufacturing sectors for 2017 um, and as you can see by that, the, by far the largest sector is, is um, food and beverage, um, followed by um, motor, vehicle, motor vehicle production. So a um, little quiz using data from the um, UNIDO data sets. Um, the US had the highest value of weapons and ammunition exports in 2016, but which country came second? So if you go to www.menti.com and use the code 15341204, you should get a little poll up there. Now, I, I should ex I should update this next year, actually, because things are, are changing rapidly. So in 2016, the, the second most valuable export um, country was actually um, Indonesia. Now, there are a couple of emissions on here. We didn't have any data for the Russian Federation. And the People's Republic of China apparently only exported $22,000 worth of um, um, ammunition and uh, weapons. I'm not quite sure if we, if we can believe that, but um, anyway. So we also have something called the Human Rights Atlas. Uh, it's it's a one. It was a one-off publication. Um, runs. It has data from uh, 1980 to uh, 2012. Uh, it was created for the M, uh, for the ESRC um, by the Human Rights Atlas project, and it brings together more than 240 different measures of economic, social, political, and legal life for over 200 different countries. Um, it uses published data from the World Bank, the United Nations, academics, NGOs, and other bodies to give a, a picture of the lives and rights of human beings over a 30 year period. And that's open data as well. So this is the sort of thing that, that you can produce using the Human Rights Atlas. Um, this is a political terror scale. Um, so blue are countries under a secure rule of law, uh, people are not in prison for their views and torture is rare or exceptional. Uh, political murders are extremely rare. And that goes through to red where um, terror has expanded to the whole population. Leaders of these societies place no limits on the means or thoroughness with which they pursue personal or ideological goals. So IEA data, uh, that's also, this is one of our restricted data sets. Um, this is the only place you can get IEA data um, other than the IEA itself, which will um, ask you to pay. So it's free to free to our users. Um, covers um, around 130 countries. Um, majority of the IEA data sets contain annual time series from uh, 1960 onwards. There is one, one data set that goes back a lot, lot further than that. We'll, we'll come to that. 
Um, covers energy production, consumption, stocks, uh, so energy stocks uh, and energy price. Um, the greenhouse gas emissions covers um, CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorinated carbons, and sulfur hexafluoride emissions into the environment. Um, so it's an extremely valuable um, resource for anyone studying climate change. So um, some examples from the IEA. IEA. This is um, this is production of electricity by um, renewable sources. So hydrogen, uh, hydro, wind, tide, wave, and ocean, solar photovoltaics. Um, industrial waste um, burning and burning of biogases. As you can see, um, orange is, um, is wind, yellow is solar photovoltaics, uh, green is biogases and blue is um, industrial waste. Um, wind has completely taken off in in the uk it's by far the largest source of uh, renewable uh, energy now <clears throat> the one data that we have that goes back a long ways is the world co2 production um that goes back to 1751 um and it's uh, an estimate using um using uh, academic papers as you can see, um, it hugely takes off in the in the industrial era, and this is um, kilotons of CO two production. Right, so we're going to have a, a follow along demo right now. <clears throat> so, if you can open a web browser and go to um, https uk data service .ac .uk, I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll do the same. We can we can have a look at some aspects of. Actually, what we'll what we'll do, we'll go. Yeah, we'll we'll start at ukdataservice.ac.uk, and we're going to look for the direction of trade statistics. So we're going to look in here, direction of. So if we search in the search bar for direction of trade, oh, just like that, those analytics. Here we go. The first thing, first hit we get is the IMF direction of trade statistics. I shall just increase the size of my screen. There. IMF direction of trade statistics, 1948 to 2021. And click on that link, we'll get some more information yeah. about that. So we've got the title of the study, uh, study number if you want a, a unique identifier. So the data is open. We have a persistent identifier. So what that means is that this will always exist. And if you follow this link, it will always take you to the data. Doesn't matter if we change um, our URLs. Um, how to cite the data, and some information about that as well. Okay, if we click on access data. Tells you all about that. Now, you might have to uh, register for this, I don't know, so, but there are some special terms and conditions pertaining to the use of the data. You just have to be aware of these, that's all. We click on access online, it should take us straight to the to ukds.stat and to that particular uh, data set. So there we go. So this is um, .stat, ukds.stat. Um, and you will notice it opened up three windows to start with, and one of those then collapses. You can always open it again. It opens it to start with just so you can so you know it's there and then, then it, um, it collapses it again. So this is the direction of state trace statistics. 
it's the it's the November 2021 edition, so um, it's it's quite recent. Um, we will get that uh, updated uh, as soon as we can. Uh, we're concentrating on IEA data at the moment. So we want to have a look for uh, for this. We're going to have a look at UK exports to its key EU partners uh, in the last ten years. Um, so if we want to look at the data, I'll, I will open the metadata up again. We've got an abstract of the data, just so you know what it is. Um, we've got some get, uh, if you want help, there's a get in touch uh, link there, how to cite it. Uh, and then we've got all the, um, the guides on using this. Uh, they're all downloadable. And then we've got some uh, metadata about the data itself. So if we want to look at our specific question, which is on UK exports to its key EU partners, we can customize the data. So we, we put um, we just put in a, what we think is a, an interesting looking um, set of data to start with. So we can customize that. We, we can customize each one or we can look at all of them at once. So we'll just look at all of them. And we're going to unselect everything. That'll clear all our um, selections. So we're going to look at um, the United Kingdom, which is hopefully there's a, a Europe section. Here we go. Um, so select United Kingdom. And we're looking for uh, goods value of exports free on board free on board is a technical term used in exporting it means the value of goods at the exporters customs frontier and the value of that is in us dollars and we're going to look at exporting to europe so we're going to look at exports to Denmark and France and Germany, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and also going to look at world exports as well. And we're going to look at annual data. And we're going to, if we go further along, we can look at time. I'm not going to select a, a time at the moment because there's a better way to do this. Open view data. It won't, it won't load anything because we haven't got a time dimension. I'll customize, and then we'll select time from here. And if we do that, we get a better selection interface. And we can select the last 10 years. And then we'll view data again. And again, nothing will come up because we haven't told it how to display this data. Well, okay. We do get something, but it's not a very good, good uh, interface. So we're going to customize the layout. So at the moment, we've got countries as rows and columns as times, and then indicators, counterpart countries and frequency um, as options. We're going to drag, click and drag the counterpart country down as a row, and we'll leave the indicator of frequency up there. And we'll view that data again. So we've got the reported country, United Kingdom, and the countries it's, it's exporting to. We've got the goods value of exports free on board and its annual data. And I shall just collapse that again so we can see all the data. So in 2012, the value of, of our exports was 472 billion. In 2020, we're down to 395. Now, 
it was only it was only down to four six nine in twenty nineteen. I'm not doing any analysis, but twenty twenty probably COVID, and we can see how we fared with all our um, different EU partners as well here. So it's 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 down for every country, but it's also down in the year before COVID hit. 2019 we're also down with every country not a huge amount but we are down so that's it that's a a, a quick example of, of using the data now we've got another demo here as well so we're going to use um some protected data so we're going to use some data from the international energy agency so i'm going to change my provider to international energy agency and it's telling me i've got to log in so i'll i shall do that and it, it's going to take me to a thing that says where are you from uh and you'll everyone will get this and it will come up you can either search for your university um so or you can choose from a list um so if i there you go there's all the universities that you could ever want that's a very long list so you can start typing so um uh, so i'll I'll go back to let me search. I'm in JISC, so that's really easy to find, and it's remembered where I'm from. But if you were from Sheffield, you start typing Chef, and there you go, three options. Much easier. Uh, it's remembered me, so I'm just going to go in with my login. And then there's a good chance it's going to, I've already logged in here this morning, so it's going to remember me, so it, I don't even have to put my uh, credentials in there. What it'll do with with you if you've not logged in that day or that um, in, in the in the past few hours, it will just send you to your university or college login screen, and then it will send you back here. And it sends you back to a default um, a default data set within the IEA, which just happens to be world CO two emissions. Now we're going to look at oil product spot prices, and we're going to see if, if we can see any um any issues caused by uh putin's war in ukraine so i'm just gonna collapse that one again so we were looking in um energy prices and taxes there we go and we're gonna look at spot market and crude oil import costs and we're looking at oil product spot prices now this is the 22 quarter three edition so it's it's just been updated if i select that you shall get a, a, a nice little display of, of, of prices now i'm going to customize this I'll choose all dimensions again so i'm only interested in gasoline prices so petrol prices um, there are three markets uh, main markets where um, oil and oil products are, 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 um, are traded. I'm going to choose the one at um, Rotterdam. I've looked for the data. It doesn't actually make that much different. Um, and I'm going to choose uh, monthly figures. And so these are the prices in dollars. I'm going to increase the size of that text search so we can see that a bit better um, so it goes all the way back to 2011 this particular one and it comes all the way up to um oh still loading it comes all the way up to september 2022 so if we start looking at the data say 2020 we're looking at Price was around $45 a barrel. It fluctuates as the market changes, goes up to 81, 84, 95 in October 21. Then in the winter, early, uh, late winter of 2022, we get the invasion of Ukraine and prices go through the roof up to 162 
And then as measures taken by um, the US and uh, Saudi Arabia, things start to come down. Um, so we can all, we can see something in almost real time. Okay, so I'll just stop that share and we'll go back to the presentation. Oh, actually, <laughs> I'll go back to that because there's various things I didn't cover there. So that's all right for looking at the data. How do we get some use out of that? Um, so we can export this data once we've got it. Excel files, probably the, the best way. If it's a huge file, text files are, 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 are the best ones. So comma separated variables, you can open these in Excel or in a stat of SPSS, whatever you want to use. If you're extremely technical and you understand SDMX, uh, you can download the, the data in SDMX format. This, this binds up the metadata and the data in the same file, but it's it's, it's machine readable, really. It's um, you can't really use it with with the human eye. It's uh, I can just show you what that looks like. That's so probably best if I don't. But um, but we do have that data if you want, and we can we can help you um, use that data if you want to. Um, you can save your queries. So if you've got a um, a complex view that you want to save, you can do that as well. It's trying to it's trying to show me the XML. I'll just say no to that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you can export export it as Excel, and uh, it for some reason we don't know why it it sometimes gives a, a little error when um, saying it can't open this file. It's it's not it. It's Excel being a bit strange. It can open the files, nothing wrong with it. So you can, the Excel files are up to 100,000 data points. So you might make, need to, if it's a huge query, you might have to make that slightly smaller. For some of our data sets, the very large ones, we have bulk downloads. So um, if I have a look for World Bank, uh, World Development Indicators, which is huge, you can do a bulk download. So you can download the whole of the data set in a, a zip file. And that's in comma separated variable format. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. So, so that's what we did, uh, UK exports, and then oil product spot prices. Um, so a, a few tips on using the data. Um, if you want to compare data, try doing it from the same data bank or family of data banks. If you go between data providers, there can be issues because they might use slightly different um, ways of, of creating their data. So theoretically, identical series can have slightly different values in different data banks. So here we have um, US GDP reported by the World Bank and the IMF, and they are almost identical until you get to 2014 and when they start to change just because of the way that that's calculated has, has, has changed slightly. Um, metadata is in the sidebar, so there's all sorts of useful stuff in there and uh, guides. And these are the guides produced by the data providers themselves. Uh, in there, you can find out how they um, how they produce those uh, statistics and the exact meanings of them. But, and oh yeah, documentation. Yep, yeah, as, as I've just said, <coughs> and how to cite the data uh, is in there as well. Um, and that's just about it, really. Um, summary of of what we do. Um, oh, uh, if you, we do have a few data skills modules. So if you are very new to the area, we have some uh, modules that you can work your way through, and it will, it will tell you all about um, how you go about 
a, a certain um, subsection of of of, um, of of data use. 